Starlink and the Real Space Race. The BDE of billionaires is next level. Jeff Bezos made an announcement that he's going to space via Blue Origin. Whether he didn't want to be outdone or wanted to steal all the spotlight, and that's pretty clever, Richard Branson announced he was doing the same via Virgin Galactic, only earlier. But the billionaire race to space is just a sideshow to the real race to space. Bezos and Amazon might control a significant portion of e-commerce and even tech infrastructure through Amazon Web Services. However, there's an even bigger play here, control over the internet itself. And it all begins right before the dot-com boom, the battle for the global signals. In November of 1998, a company called Iridium launched a brand new satellite communication service. And just 10 months later, the company filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. They'd failed to take into account one pretty simple fact. It requires billions of dollars to launch satellites into space. 20 years later, Elon Musk is barging into the exact same space. Only he's doing it Musk style, using his now typical and ultra successful game plan. First, he's churned the really expensive thing into a commodity, just like he did with electric cars and rocket ships. His company, Starlink, is on the verge of creating satellites on an assembly line. Second, he's his own customer. SpaceX needs a continually full calendar of payloads to take to space. And Starlink always needs to get satellites up to build out its network. It's a win-win. Third, he's leveraging the U.S. government. All right your taxpayer dollars to fund the entire thing. Starlink has been picking up lucrative FCC contracts to provide satellite-based internet to areas all across the United States. And fourth, the company is making a ton of money before it is even fully launched and using that to fund future growth. The company already has over $500 million worth of subscribers and reservations. Even the founder of Iridium knows the eventual outcome. And I quote, I wish Mr. Musk well, he said. I do expect him to succeed. Iridium was just building a satellite phone service, but Starlink is taking that a few major leaps further. Starlink wants to be the internet service provider for the world. And when it's fully built out, it will upend the world order in much the same way the internet did in the late 90s and early 2000s. The Starlink concept is really simple. With a small pizza box sized satellite dish, a user can access the internet from anywhere in the world. Anywhere. A barge in the Suez Canal, the top of Mount Everest, the Sahara Desert. The service is currently being tested in a few countries. In true Musk fashion, they're calling it better than nothing beta test. Already, it's pretty great. By the end of the year, they expect to triple the speed. And for context, the average U.S. inner speed is less than 200 Mbps. And it's just going to get better. Starlink's original stated goal was 1 gigabps internet. Four times the fastest country in the world, Singapore. And they've promised the FCC they will provide internet with zero contracts, early cancellation fees, or data caps. The price? $99. But that's expected to come down. As Musk tweeted, Starlink is a staggeringly difficult technical and economic endeavor. However, if we don't fail, the cost to end users will improve every year. Once Starlink is fully operational, a majority of internet users won't even consider anything else. Which begs the question, when and how will all of this unfold? As of early 2019, Less than 5,000 satellites in total had ever been launched from Earth. Starlink projects that 12,000 satellites will be necessary to provide reliable global internet coverage at ultra-fast speeds. Seems impossible, right? The first small batch of Starlink satellites was sent into space via SpaceX in May 2019. Right now, there are nearly 1,500 Starlink satellites in orbit. That's the picture you're looking at right now, but it's gonna grow tenfold. More importantly, the frequency of launches is accelerating, and this is something very important. From six months between the first two launches is now just down to nine days between launches. 
Expect that to eventually become hourly. Yes, hourly. Further, Musk is preparing a new Starship, which will be able to haul four times as many satellites per trip. In other words, Starlink is going to get bigger than expected, much faster than expected, all paid for by the U.S. customers through the FCC. And it gets better. The satellites will be deorbited after three to four years. So just like Tesla, SpaceX will be able to upgrade them on a rolling basis. In an early 2021 presentation, Starlink revealed they plan to reach speeds of 10 gigabits per second, in part by using lasers to communicate between satellites. This isn't about faster Netflix and porn speeds. This is going to revolutionize where, when, and how business is done. And it's going to have massive ramifications for global politics and the world order. Okay, I'm going to channel President Reagan for this next title. Mr. Musk, tear down this firewall. Once the satellites are in space, remember, more than twice as many has ever been launched, there will not be space for a second internet service provider. China and Russia fear this in a big way. The space race was covered in my book, The Rise of America, if you want to know more. But if Musk is successful, the game will be over and the second order effects of a single global internet service provider will be unlike anything you've ever seen before. For example, right now, Jeff Bezos from Amazon, Mike Zuckerberg's Facebook, Sundar Pichai of Google, and Tim Cook of Apple wield incredible power. As you've seen, a flip of the Facebook switch can instantly mute someone from the world stage. Elon Musk is positioning himself to be the person with power over the people who have power. Once he controls the world's internet, he can dictate what is and is not transmitted worldwide. And you can bet that major world powers and governments are watching this closely. And you're probably aware of the so-called Great Firewall of China, which is the government's uses to determine what users can access. Russia, India, Iran, Syria, and Vietnam also have or are implementing similar programs. With Starlink, users will be able to circumvent that filter it's a little difficult to block all of space. I'm even willing to speculate that Starlink will open source the patents for the receiver dishes, just like Tesla did. Same guy in control, right? But all of that is nothing compared to the real competition unfolding because the world's biggest country and the world's biggest entrepreneur both have the same grand ambition. Get to Mars first. SpaceX knows the entire space launch industry is only worth about $5 billion in revenue a year. Global internet access? That's about a trillion plus a year market. Or the size of China's entire GDP a couple of decades ago. With that kind of revenue, SpaceX and Elon Musk have a shot at winning this thing. Over the course of the next year, we're going to watch a no-holds-barred fight with Earth as the arena. Like the founder of Iridium, my money's on Elon. And to all those who bash Elon, I ask, what have you done to make society better? Until next time, stay safe.